Uh, at this time, everyone would go ahead and raise, uh, stand for the invocation from Mr. Moraz. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody will bow their hairs, please. Heads. Heavenly Father, great and mighty God that you are, we ask you tonight to bless this city council meeting here in Los Banos, and we ask um, you to bless our council members and our mayor, and let all the decisions made here tonight be within your complete will, Lord. Lord, please bless our police department, our fire department, and our emergency responders, and bless this city of Los Banos with peace and brotherly love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll call the meeting to order at 601, and we'll ask the chief to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll ask Miss Lucy, for our, our city clerk, here. Uh, we have a quorum. We'll now move on to item number four, consideration of the approval of agenda, and I'll ask for a motion. Uh, Ms. Luce, uh, Councilman Lerluz? So moved. Second, Mr. Jones? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Natasha, All right. you want to stand right over here? This is a certificate for recognition presented to Natasha Mora Miranda, admin clerk to police department, in recognition of your outstanding performance and dedicated service to the city of Los Banos and for being named employee of the month for August 2024. I apologize for that, now that you can hear. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, it's open now. Okay. Um, hi, I'm a resident here of Los Banos. I have um, a couple things I want to ask about. Um, I know you guys are used to correcting me at the end, so I'll wait until the end to see if you correct me or not. I have um, on the bids that we had, um, I know there's a 5% discount for a local um, vendor. Um, but it wasn't applied in regards to the one with Zoom Recreation, so I was just wondering why. And the other, there's two cars that were bought from Santos, 
but four from out of the area. Um, from what I understand, we also have to take them out of town to, for repairs and maintenance and, you know, any kind of warranty work. And I wonder if it could, the trucks could have waited a little bit longer than the 14-day period that was put on the bid. Um, so those are the questions I have on that. Um, I've also been um, walking different areas in helping some of the people running for office. Um, I've talked to new people, and the remark that I keep hearing um, from people that I go to their doors is, he won in court, why does that upset me in regards to the $1.8 million? Um, so I'm asking, maybe I know something different, is I didn't think there was any judicial proceeding in regards to our payout. Um, there was no independent review of the facts behind the claim. There was no public hearing in regard to the claims. The city's liability carrier, Indian Harbor, told the council not to pay. They would pay for a defense because there was no grounds for it to stand on. So I'm wondering um, why the public knows something different than I know, um, and that's just by asking questions. Who, ne who negotiated the terms, because they heard it was 3.6 and brought down to 1.8? Um, which members did the negotiation? Um, what were the council's consideration when these funds were paid out of a general fund since there was no insurance coverage for it? Um, so if I'm wrong in the information that I have, like you do at every other meeting that I talk out and you correct me at the end, if you could do that for me. Otherwise, I'll assume that what I've stated is correct. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mayor and distinguished council members. My name is Alondra Jimenez. I'm here to announce that the Office of Assemblywoman Soria will be hosting mobile, mobile office here in Los Baños starting October. Mobile office hours will consist of educating constituents of the services our office provides, also having constituents fill out intake forms for casework regarding EDD, DMV, the Franchise Tax Board, and other state agencies. We look forward to serving the growing beautiful city of Los Baños in any way we can. For more information, please contact Julian at our Merced office at 209-726-5465 as he will be the new representative for the city of Los Baños on behalf of Assembly Esmeralda Soria. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Pro Temp Mayor, Council and staff. I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support with the uh, animal shelter, the, um, of course, the Friends of the Los Benos Animals, and Feral Freedom. On September 5th, uh, we, as a group, completed um, a I forgot the name of it, but we toured 70 cats over to get fixed, spayed and neutered. And of course, some of them were, um, came from homes, and the other half came, were feral cats that we had to travel. Yesterday, we completed 58 dogs, and a, of course, a few home cats and a few feral cats jumped in for the ride. So we continue to do this. Uh, once and twice a month with the support of, of course, yourselves, um, the um, Chief Reina, Sergeant Mendez, the code enforcement officers, the employees of the shelter, and of course the shelter in whole. And we are working all together for that. Thank you so much for your continued support. It, we are making a difference. We're grateful also for the shelter providing us all the crates to fit all these animals. Um, they are always cleaned and wonderful, and um, that is invaluable 
to the community. So thank you for doing that. Also, the shelter individuals provide an input data as far as uh, dogs that are being, um, of course, licensed and, um, and all the things that are going on as far as the data. The city uh, shelter individuals are doing a really fantastic job with that, and we'd like to thank them. Um, just so you can know, about once or twice a month, we go ahead and we do a dog or cat run. Uh, we also, uh, twice a week, run cats, feral cats, over to get fixed. And Levi and Feral Freedom does that for us. The SNP bus does it for the once or twice a month large load. So something that we do when we do the large loads is that the day before, two days before, we're either trapping or we, and we are also doing logistics, calling people, telling them that they won the lucky draw, and uh, we continue working. That day is a whole day that starts at 5 a.m. Thank you for the shelter. And also, these since the shelter is being so much improved on, thank you, uh, we have to, re we did relocate close to the airport, and they gave their blessing, so kudos to the, our airport. So we are planning, we are working on the Los Banos High School colony. Um, there are two other individuals, not myself, um, that are working diligently, and they're even getting kids together involved in that. Uh, we are now working in the downtown colony, and um, so anybody can reach us via our webpage for that. Um, we'd be we're gr really grateful for the contact. Please remember, and I'm going to not follow protocol, but we uh, but we are saving for every cat. A resident in this city is saving two hundred fifty dollars to get their cat spayed or neutered. The individuals that are doing their dogs are actually saving up more, at least $600 for that spay and neutering. So we'd like to, the whole team in general, all the team that's been working in here, it's been a pedal to the metal. I almost said something different. But it's pedal to the metal, and we're really working really hard about it. Um, I'm not going to show you guys all about how to open a trap. This is a trap. We ask that when you do see a trap, not to mess with the trap. The PD really knows what it is. But once the cat goes into the trap, and this is where the food is, they step on it, and the trap closes. We're always in attendance. We're always watching it. But thank you very much. Take care. And thank you for your support. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Lambert and Council. Chris Don Santos here representing the office of Congressman John Duarte. And first off, our office would like to wish everyone in Los Banos a happy National Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, the Congressman's been busy at work across the district and in Washington, D.C., as we're in the appropriation season now in Washington. And the Congressman recently hosted a House Natural Resources Subcommittee on Water, Wildlife, and Fisheries field hearing just up the road at the Hotel Mission Diorio in Santa Noa to discuss the need for water abundance in California. We had several members of Congress present. We also had key water stakeholders. We had the exchange contractors, Westlands Water District, Turtle Lake Irrigation District, and other farmers and key water stakeholders present to discuss the need for water abundance in our valley. Um, we're also pleased to announce that yesterday, the House passed Congressman Duarte's bill, H.R. 7816, that's the Clear Communication for Veterans Claims Act, which would require the VA to contract with a federally funded research and development center to make VA notice letters, which can often be um, full of indecipherable jargon, easier to understand for veterans and their families, because these are regarding crucial benefits like education benefits, medical benefits, and other benefits as well. Uh, Congressman Duarte also recently co-sponsored the Farm to Market Road Improvement Act, uh, H.R. 9531, to improve rural communities' roads, bridges, and waterways. So specifically, this bill would set aside 10% of the Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program for farm-to-market road projects. Uh, heavy trucks move most of our groceries, which drains valley roads, and trucks actually carry 
of all agricultural freight by tonnage, with many of the trucks weighing up to 80,000 pounds each. So poor farm to market roads lead to delays, higher costs, and ultimately higher prices at grocery stores for consumers. This is especially relevant for Los Banos residents given the city's proximity to tomato packing companies, dairies, and other large agricultural facilities. In fact, on the way over here, I got stuck behind a couple of those uh, ag trucks myself. So our valley's economy and food availability depends on the condition of farm to market roads, and this funding would strengthen our local food supply in our communities. And the upcoming month of October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and Congressman Duarte is proud to support H.R. 549, that's the Metastatic Breast Cancer Access to Care Act. Over 43,000 Americans actually died from breast cancer in 2022, and 90% of those deaths were due to metastatic late-stage breast cancer. Uh, like most Americans, Congressman Duarte has seen just how devastating a breast cancer diagnosis can be for families and how beneficial rapid care can be for patients. So specifically, this act would expedite payments of Social Security disability insurance benefits and eligibility for Medicare coverage for those with metastatic breast cancer. It would eliminate the five-month waiting period for SSDI and the 24-month waiting period for Medicare. Uh, Congressman Duarte is also co-sponsored along the lines of a woman's health in a new law with uh, Congresswoman Miller Meeks of Iowa to provide financial relief to families pursuing in vitro fertilization treatments. So more than 11,000 babies were born in the state of California in 2021 using IVF. That's almost 3% of all births statewide. But only 28% of large companies actually provide IVF benefits at all, leaving many families the, the burden of the cost. So HR 9479 would establish a refundable tax credit of up to $30,000 to cover IVF-related expenses. And specifically, uh, it would allow them to deduct IVF-related expenses, including transportation, egg retrievals and transfers, counseling, lab fees, medications, ultrasounds, and other expenses, even beyond uh, the $30,000 limit in some cases. Uh, helping families grow is a priority for the congressman as a father and a husband, and he's proud to support this common sense solution. So again, the congressman's been busy at work. Also forgot to mention, we'd like to thank uh, Marianas and Councilmember Lewis for their attendance representing the city of Los Banos at that congressional field hearing. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Yeah, we are uh, homeowners of uh, homes on Ward Road next to um, those, uh, yeah, next to the park on San Luis, <coughs> the Dos Amigos Park. And we want to bring to your attention our concerns living on this neighborhood. Um, and here, uh, my name is Felicia Bogdan. I'm on Ward, right next to the park. I'm and Glenna Reyes. I'm right on the corner of Ward and San Luis, the two-story house. Why we're here is because we don't feel safe. There's been two shootings. One boy died. He was 17. That was back in 2014. There was just another shooting. What about? It was 29? Yeah. And he didn't die, but went to the hospital. He got shot. And we don't feel safe. Her... Uh, door. My back, uh, my uh, glass sliding door that faces the park got a, a hole, a bullet hole. I had to replace it in 2016. So this is concerns that we want to bring out to you. And um, uh, I have a pool also in my backyard, and I have family that comes swimming, and I don't feel safe. What we're asking is if the city can put up a brick across. It would only go up to your house. And it would start behind my backyard Going to hers. Mine. And that's, uh, that's really um, why we asked you. That's why we're here. This is our first time here, so uh, I hope we don't have to come back and request this, but this is a really uh, concern that we have in um, living there. You know, I'm legally blind. Uh, people can be next on the other side of my fence, of my fence, I can't see them. They can be looking at me or doing things, I can't see. 
So I just really don't feel comfortable <coughs> going and hang out in my backyard. Right. You know, I hear guys or people talking and walking and gathering there, and I just had to go inside because I don't feel safe. And I've lived here all my life. I was born and raised here. Uh, my maiden name was Iudas, and I just, Los Banos has really changed. I know the town has grown, and I know once a town grows, things do change, but it's sad when you live in your home and you're, you just don't feel safe. I have been here since 2020, and lately uh, my husband is sitting down, but he has, he has been patching the fence because sometimes the kids are playing and pulling the, the fence, so they're just breaking in his pieces. So he has been patching it. Um, another thing, kids throw rocks on my glass door and you know those block the sliding doors are a double window one of the windows got broken because the fence is short so they do throw things and rocks at the houses and I also fear for my dogs and my nephews because I do have two nephews living there that when kids are playing in the backyard and not especially little kids there's teenagers um, they do make a big noise and they do throw things at our house or trash cans garbage. That's the reason that I came here, but this is my first time being here as In well. one minute. Now, we please thank you for listening to us, and we please consider, consider our request. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, um, pro tem mayor, city manager, council, city council, and city staff. My name is Vidi, and I am the Los Banos representative to uh, Peninsula Clean Energy. And I am here today to talk about all the great accomplishments that, we've do, that we are doing around the city. Um, first, I want to start off with we have sponsored two field trips for the high schools, um, for Los Banos High School and for Pacheco High School, each, student, each high school, excuse me, is taking 75 kids to UC Merced to learn about clean energy, sustainability, and how to uh, create a resilient community. Um, we were also sponsors of the Young Legislator Program for Senator Ana Caballero. Um, it is a program that she puts on every year during the summer um, and invites students 9 through 12 um, to learn about the government, so how the, the workings of the government, um, and they end on a trip to the state capitol, and they visit Senator Ana Caballero's office, um, and I am delighted to announce that there were 16 students from Los Baños that joined that program. Um, also, um, PCE is, or I should say Peninsula Clean Energy, we are promoting a state-funded grant um, known as PCE Solar Plus Battery. Um, it is an opportunity for members of the community of Los Baños who don't have solar um, can potentially get free to low-cost solar or if they already have, excuse me, solar and battery, so battery backup, or if they already have um, solar, they have the opportunity to have a, a backup battery um, it is great for um, anybody that has, like, medical devices. So if the power ever goes out, you are on a backup battery. So, you you know, you don't have to worry about um, not having energy. I am working on having office hours um, to be available for anybody in the city that wants to come and talk to me and has questions, um, wants to learn more information about this really cool program. It's great. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's state-funded. A PCE, we are facilitating, um, hoping that we can get as many applications in um, for, for approval. Um, lastly, I do want to announce that I will be participating um, this Saturday at the Downtown Fall Street Fair. I'll have a table. Um, 
It was really nice. The last time that we um, tabled at the National Night Out, it was a great success. I uh, had a lot of people come up to me and talk to me. Um, and so I will be at the fall festival this Saturday if anybody wants to come and say hello. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is Jacqueline Lawrence. I'm uh, representing Lighthouse Project, God's Work, which is 31 years old. Um, I work with the homeless. I have a homeless person with a broken hip on dialysis. He's been um, charging his power chair over there at the horse. And I'm very concerned that his hip is not going to be healed right. Um, that's what Elaine Corey said because um, she's dealt with uh, Dave Diekman um, about his. And so um, we don't have, we have a respite. A respite, you have to be self-efficient. You don't have that here. Um, you can't go to the bridge house because there's stairs. We need a program called Respite Care. That's what I'm working on on Delta Road and a new hospital. I had to pick that area because I need all of the senses of all the surrounding towns to get this hospital. I'm working on a 12-step program. The, the convalescent is not a good place for him to be because it's too easy access for him to get alcohol. We need a program here. 31 years, and I was homeless in the Walmart parking lot for two years in Santa Ana for a couple of years, recycling, making about $700 a month, not, and getting in hotels. This man, Salvation Army won't put him in a hotel. Pastor Steve won't put him in a hotel. We need help. We need it now. My lawyer will be here at the end of, at, at Senior Salute, and if I have to, Sue the city of Los Banos, have him sue. I will do it. Because Mr. Taylor's mom died of dialysis. My grandmother fell and died three days later at dialysis. This is very private to me. And Mama Gloria is dead right now. I said the 12th. This is her thing that she did with the warming center and the cooling center. I want a program here. You need it now. He, he, you, if he dies on the street, I will be the first one to see you. Mayor Pro Tem Council, I'm Pastor Raul Granillo at Mercy Springs Church of the Nazarene. And I want to come up today to let you know that we will be holding another immigration workshop on October 3rd at the church. We're working with um, Civic, the Central Valley Immigration Consort. Um, we'll be doing DACA renewals, uh, citizenship, um, all of which free of cost. We will have consultants on site and attorneys for any of those who who need help with these situations. So I would encourage you, if you know anybody who could use this, this resource, to um, have them reach out, let us know, and we'll be doing this again. It'll be October 3rd from 4 p.m. till about 7 p.m. And every time we do it, we end up with a full house. But um, I say that to say that it's also a big need that we have in our community. And I, I um, if there's anything that we can do to have something more permanent for our people, for our for the members of our community, whether they're documented or not, they are here and they are part of our community. I want to also um, kind, of, kind of change on that a little bit. Uh, it was mentioned earlier, uh, some questions about Mr. Pinheiro's uh, settlement, uh, which I'm not concerned with one way or the other here. But it does bring something to mind that I think would benefit this council and this city 
is if maybe we made an effort to be more transparent about everything that we do. There are absolutely legal instances when um, you are required to keep things private. But for the most part, those situations come because something was done that has that would cause distrust in the community or something that people don't want to share because it would shame them or cause problems. And so we come up with legal reasons to keep that blocked and to keep that hidden. Now I get that there are circumstances when that needs to happen, but we all know, and I'm going to go ahead and state out loud the obvious. And if we have to hide something, if we choose to hide something, if we want to hide something, the vast majority of the time, it is because we know that we have done something wrong we don't want anyone else to know. And if we don't share that narrative, it's easy to let everyone create all kinds of narratives and not worry about it. So in these instances, just like what happened with the council and the hiring and the firing of our city manager, this city would have done well to have been transparent. And that means every single council member on board. There were so many ways that this could have brought forth, even coming forward and saying, hey, look, we did something and we can't talk about it for legal reasons. But we didn't come forward. This city didn't come forward. We didn't talk. We just hid. And then when the city backlashes or when people start to make accusations, conspiracy theories, whatever it is, you choose to take a stance of, of defense and to, to act like you're attacked. What do you expect? You are all reasonable people. You would not be behind that panel if you were not. When you hide something, when you're not transparent entirely, you lose the trust of the people you claim to serve. And that integrity is important. And it's an integrity that is being fractured in our community right now. This election that's coming up breaks my heart in so many ways. Because every bit of it seems to be nothing more than bickering and fighting and trying to protect each other's image rather than being concerned about a single citizen of our community. So why don't we for once show some integrity and be transparent as best that we can and share with the people what's actually happening, whether it's good or bad. Don't be afraid to show your warts. We all know you mess up. We all do. Own it and move on. Once you share something, once you share your, your darkest secret, once you share that thing that you're afraid that gets out, its power is gone. Let it out. Let's move on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Travis Lobig, um, a candidate for uh, City Council for District 4. Um, I'm also the uh, Los Banos Little League uh, Vice President. Um, I've been involved with Colorado Park for the past 12, 13 years. <coughs> Our town, uh, this last year or two, has, has battled each other and bashed each other and, and done done a lot because of um, repetitious things that have happened um, in the past and 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 there's no great answer what, what he was saying right now to to solve the situation it's just a lot of bashing but when it comes down to our youth sports and our our uh, moving forward and and the next step that we need to take in my opinion we've we've gotten blessed with quite a bit of things this last uh, these last couple of years, and, and I have three young kids. My young daughter uses some of the new parks, which is great. Um, Pal, the Powell Field got redone, which is great. Um, but there's still things that were neglected tremendously over the past 20 years. <clears throat> One of them is Colorado Park, which every kid that grows up in this town uh, has some type of memories there. Um, and the other one is even uh, the ag complex. Those fields are, are old and, and you can barely run in the outfield right now. The nets are deteriorating. Um, but at the same time, at the ag complex, we got you know, a, a snack shack there now, at least, this past year and, and a few other things. But, uh, but when it comes down to it, there's choices that we're going to choose to spend money on certain things, you know, homeless deals, which you know, is, is something that we 
obviously have a lot of situations with in town, and and at least there's there's progress somewhat to that. Um, people can actually walk on the, you know, paths without being too scared anymore. Um, but when it comes down to Colorado Colorado Park or or where our next money is going, you know, it, 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 certain things need to be done, or else the youth of today's and and I even see it in some of the younger par you know younger adults of today. They're like, oh, what is my town done for me the past however long, and it's and it's a and it's too bad because a lot of people are just like, oh, we need to, you know, s save the money and not spend and be cheap about certain things and and certain people are proud of of that kind of situation. But the people from the past that were didn't want to spend money and that were that didn't or I'd say cheap or that's just a slang way of saying it. But but they worked hard to make this town a great place and and even a lot of the farming areas and the it's beautiful. Our surrounding town is beautiful. We have a hidden gem here, but inside of our town, we do have a lot of crime, like what was mentioned about building a wall for, for the crime situation, or, or there's so many different things we can do. But when it comes down to it, money, even if however it's figured out, you know, it seems like a lot of money to spend however much million, money, 15 million, but, but they're talking about a new skate park, a splash pad. We had 10 kids that were skateboarders in here three or four months ago, and there hasn't been one thing done over at Colorado Park besides the organizations that are using it. And that's part of our, the organization's jobs as well. But this last, uh, this la you know, those last few years, we've had light poles go down. We've had, uh, you know, a lot of issues. Um, even Ms. Lewis mentioned there's, there's a water fountain that's just disgusting on the side. You know, certain things just need, need, need done. And, uh, and we could slowly do it or else we can, you know, as a city, you know, and, and I'm sure there's other people in the town. There's, there's awesome, like what I, I say it in a certain way, one, but awesome farmers and, <clears throat> and developers in town that, that might want to put some money towards some of this stuff. They ha maybe they haven't in the past, but maybe it's their time, too, to shine and actually help with certain projects to, to actually, like, I always say to put a statue up or to do something. But, but that's my main concern. Um, you know, I don't want to, you know, just spend all the city's money and I, you know, there's issues in the past I, 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 with the city manager deal, but, but, you know, he's out, he's been out at the parks. He's seen, you know, what we're dealing with and, and a, a lot of the young, young uh, council we have now, th I don't think it needs to be an argument beside, between some of the older people in town. It needs to be time for the older people to just say, hey guys, maybe we should do things this way rather than just bash each other. So, so I really am excited for the Colorado. I'm bummed about Ten bowling seconds. alley being down. Um, because now that's another thing that the older community and the younger community loved our bowling alley, even though maybe the ownership wasn't right. That's not nothing we could change, Time but we need to do everything we can to. Time. Do we have anyone else? At this time, we'll close the public forum and we'll move on to our next item, item number seven. Consideration of the approval of a consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be voted on one in one motion unless removed from the consent agenda by a city council member. We'll now turn to city clerk, Ms. Malone. <coughs> Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 246940 through 247398 in the amount of $3,663,789.28. City Council meeting minutes for August 7, 2024. City Council meeting minutes for August 21st, 2024. City Council resolution number 6825, authorizing the city manager to execute the contract with Zoom Recreation for the construction of shade structures in city parks in the amount of $173,997 and a project contingency of $26,003. City Council Resolution Number 6826, authorizing the city manager to execute the contract with Ronnie's Inc. for the construction of Sunrise Ranch Park in the amount of $999,856.50 and a project contingency of $150,000.
City Council Resolution Number 6827, authorizing the City Manager to execute the contract with Ronnie's Inc. for the construction of the Community Center Perimeter Fence Project in the amount of $144,741 and the project contingency of $21,700. City Council Resolution Number 6828, awarding the bid for the purchase of a new 2024 three-quarter ton medium duty utility truck with lumber rack to Santa's Ford and issue purchase order in the amount of $66,896.26. City Council Resolution Number 6829, awarding the bid for the purchase of a new 2024 three-quarter ton medium duty utility truck to Santa's Ford and issue purchase order in the amount of $65,808.76. City Council Resolution Number 6830, awarding the bid for the purchase of a new 2024 one half ton truck with liftgate to Greenwood Chevrolet and issue purchase order in the amount of $49,553.62. City Council Resolution Number 6831, awarding the bid for the purchase of a new 2024 model SUV to Greenwood Chevrolet and issue purchase order in the amount of $42,214.73. City Council Resolution Number 6832, awarding the bid for the purchase of a new 2023 medium duty flatbed truck to Greenwood Chevrolet and issue purchase order in the amount of $80,247.08. City Council Resolution Number 6833, awarding the bid for the purchase of a purchase of two new 2024 three-quarter ton medium duty 4x4 utility trucks with lift gates to Greenwood Chevrolet and issue purchase order in the amount of $154,848.82. City Council Resolution Number 6834, approving the acceptance of a $48,050 grant awarded by the California Department of Alcohol Beverage Control related to the enforcement of alcohol-related crimes and amending the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget by increasing the appropriation amount for expenditures and revenues in the amount of $48,050. And the items are to be approved as submitted. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Ms. Maloney. And now we return to council desk. Ms. Lewis. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to pull some items on the consent agenda. Items uh, <clears throat> 7G, H, I, J, K, and L. <clears throat> okay, we'll start with item G. Well, I'm, I'm going to kind of take all oh. these together because okay. they're similar in questions that I have for our public works director. Um, my first question is, five of the six vehicles claim um, under your capital outlay plan uh, that there is a $20,000 grant reimbursement from the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. Uh, when did the city apply for that grant? And were you was the city approved to receive the money once the purchases are made? And is there a deadline uh, to receive the grant money? <clears throat> Just, <clears throat> Madam Lewis, members of council, um, if I can, uh, Mr. Bernil, do you have uh, know those answers to those questions about the grant? Uh, we, we do apply for the grant. Generally, the grants are, um, are on a reimbursement basis. We have to qualify for the grant. Uh, we get approved, make the purchase, and then submit that to, to uh, AQMD for reimbursement. And, and I understand that, but my question was, when did we apply for the grant? Have you applied for the grant? Um, I believe we have. I think it may have been prior to my arrival here. 
because I checked today and there was no record of application. Now, maybe, you know, there's something further in the depth of uh, the department, but I checked with our CEO and there was no um, nothing that showed that we had applied for a grant for these vehicles. So, yes, ma'am. I, I am not aware of that. I'd have to uh, research and get back to you. <clears throat> okay, I, I would have hoped that since these projects are in your name that you would have been able to answer these questions. But I'll move forward. Um, the other th and, and the other thing that I would like to find out from you is, is there a deadline to receive these grants um, that you say the city has applied for from Valley Air? And of the six vehicles, Santos had the lowest bid on four of them. And in your specifications for requirement of delivery, um, it indicates, and I, I checked a few of them, and the wording seemed to be the same, that um, delivery date shall be 14 calendar days or less from the date of the bid award. So is, is that standard operation um, in our city to require that level of uh, <clears throat> delivery? Yes, we have. We have in the past, we asked for a, a delivery time of, of two weeks. But do we ask that in all of our applications when we're seeking vehicles for the city through your department? Um, Could you come to the lectern, please, so it could be recorded? Thank you. Uh, in the past, we've had a, a delivery date window um, that was uh, longer than the two weeks. But we have uh, also, in the past experiences, have uh, seen that uh, that delivery window had not never uh, never was met and exceeded uh, to the point to where. Uh, past experiences have pushed this out to close to a year to over a year of the del delivery date, um, which in that span, uh, maintenance cost, uh, we, we occur maintenance cost on vehicles that we were, were trying to replace with the vehicles, with the new vehicles coming in. So uh, that's why uh, we, we see a uh, shorter delivery date window in hopes that we can get some vehicles in uh, a timely manner. To, to replace the vehicles that are, we are, um, that maintenance costs are, are going up and, and vehicles that we need to move on with. Okay, so with that being said, are these vehicles that we're purchasing now or proposed to purchase uh, replacing older vehicles that we have? Uh, some, some older vehicles will be, be, de be decommissioned with some of the vehicles that we're purchasing now. So not, not every vehicle, that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Correct. We will be holding on to a couple of vehicles, but some of the, um, uh, most of the vehicles we will be decommissioning. decommissioning. Okay. So this, um, do you know the number of vehicles that are just being added to the fleet and not uh, replacing an older I, vehicle? I don't have that information with me. Okay. I, I guess I'm, I'm just concerned um, because I've never experienced um, up until recently here of the urgency of having a 14-day delivery. Um, you know, the car dealers ship, some of them are larger than others, and they can uh, get vehicles from the manufacturer much quicker. Um, I, I can understand, you know, having a year out and not getting a vehicle in, that's, that's a bit far out. But, you know, maybe 30 days or a month and a half doesn't seem unreasonable unless you've got a vehicle that's absolutely falling apart and it's costing the city a lot of money. Um, but, but the 14 days, if we're not decommissioning every vehicle for a one-to-one -one replacement, seems to be a bit draconian and um, has uh, canceled out some, uh, not only just Santos, but other dealerships that had lower bids uh, that could have participated in the purchase of, of uh, selling us the vehicles uh, for a purchase. Councilmember Lewis, could I add a, a little bit? Um, 
So uh, regarding the first question um, relating to the grant, uh, I believe that just might be a miscommunication. The uh, staff report, I don't believe, re references any grant. I think um, where that's coming from is in the narratives listed. That was a, as an attachment as a staff report. And that's referencing the um, SJVA PCD grant for the Prius's purchase. Um, and that I know they have applied uh, for and received that grant. So uh, I don't believe there's any grant funding associated with these trucks. I think that you're just seeing that with the narrative. So for example, on uh, page 105, there's uh, line item 750. That's going to be purchase of a three quarter ton utility pickup truck for 65,000. And then it has a comma Toyota uh, Prius as the next item and the Prius um, has a grant reimbursement of 20,000. So I think there, that might be a, a mix up on, on that. Um, I'll let Chuck confirm that maybe um, this coming week, but just wanted to uh, say that. And then also um, I believe that at least four of these vehicles um, are going to be kept in house. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the other two are getting um, uh, decommissioned, but I know that we have had um, quite a few trucks that we're dealing with um, issues throughout several divisions in terms of needing to pair up staff, um, having trucks stall out. Um, so we have been dealing with um, at least the, the, I would say the biggest hardship in terms of trucks since I've been here on staff in terms of um, just lacking vehicles as well as um, our, our current fleet just having those issues. Um, I know, for example, in parks, we have quite a few uh, 2002s, 2004s, um, and 150,000K uh, in up mileage. Well, again, and I, and I thank you for your uh, fill-in on that, but with each of the um, trucks that are being purchased, there is reference made under a code 550 vehicles, and it was highlighted when I received it the purchase of a three-quarter ton utility truck, and in parentheses, uh, $85,000. Now, the Prius is on there. It's on every single one of them. And then there's talk about how it's to be, to be divided up. Uh, the second one is um, a three-quarter ton medium-duty truck. And when I go to the wastewater collections under uh, 750, it makes reference to two of those trucks being purchased, a three-quarter uh, ton utility truck, and it has the same scenario there. So uh, it seems like maybe there's a cut and paste here. I don't know. Uh, but this is a part of the transparency to let our community know as well as the uh, council know exactly what's going on. So when I read this, I assume that there's a $20,000 grant reimbursement involved in these vehicles some way or another because that was pre-highlighted when I received my packet. Um, so at this point, I guess what I'm hearing is that there is no grant coming from the Valley Air District. Um, yes, <laughs> no, um, I, I, I will chime in on this. The 750 account, it's the account, the, geo, the general, the accounting uh, code that we use to account for all vehicles that we're purchasing, whether they're uh, the utility trucks, the Toyota Priuses, they all are being budgeted out of that account. So, um, and what you're seeing is that the highlighted version, it's the item that in, um, I believe, the Public Works Department for ease and transparency highlighted it, what we were purchasing, that it was approved from the budget. The Toyota Prius is not highlighted, so we are not making the purchase of the pr Toyota Prius that it's supposed to be a cost sharing between the city and the grant. So that it would be a separate item that when um, the department is ready and has received funding and is ready to move forward for um, purchasing, the Prius will come to the council for approval. Okay. Well, again, there's more information here that's needed. Uh, when I read this, I was under the assumption that there was a $20,000 grant associated with all of these vehicles. So um, <clears throat> uh, that, that's my take on it. I, I think it would be better that uh, in, in reporting going forward that you just report what it is that you're trying to purchase. And if there's a grant involved, then list the grant. If there's not, don't, don't list information. That doesn't apply to the um, agenda item that is being presented. <clears throat> Wait, so 
Okay. Just give me a second. I'm okay. just looking uh, the over my manager wants to make a comment on some of that too real fast while you're yeah. waiting on your next Mayor Pro Tem and Council, so just to let you know that these vehicles are much needed for the city. Uh, we have, as uh, Joe Heim has said, we have many individuals that are doubled up in vehicles because the vehicles are just not operating. We have trucks that are not working. We have not invested in our vehicles. We have vehicles where these individuals are driving or 2004 vehicles. Literally had an employee come to me. He's like, I'm basically having to say a prayer every day in hopes that my vehicle starts. So uh, we have added staff. We have not invested in our vehicles, just as you know, we had not invested in our infrastructure of our painting of our buildings, of our air conditioning, things of the sort. So this is money that needs to be spent in order to have the uh, em employees out there being efficient and doing the work of the city. And on regards to the grants, we have applied um, for about four, five, I believe, four or five vehicles um, for Priuses um, that can be used once again for us throughout the city because. There is a need for vehicles, and we need those vehicles as of yesterday because um, there's individuals that just don't have a vehicle to go get their job done, and it's just not efficient for the operations of the city. So these are of much need, and uh, we're really looking forward to getting those vehicles in-house to help us serve uh, the community. And um, so, um, again, I've stated my position on this, and, and it would make it easier for me as a council person to... <coughs> just have the information if we're replacing it for a certain reason, if we're decommissioning, um, put it in the report that a vehicle is being de decommissioned and this one will be replacing it. It would be um, uh, transparent to council as well as to our public. Uh, just as a side note, um, uh, the California Air Resources Board um, has a uh, advanced, clear fleet policy that they've come up with in 2023. I, I believe, you know, based on this report that these are all combustion vehicles. They are not hybrid or electric. And so uh, in the purchasing of these, I, I would hope, you know, that you guys would research that website to make sure that we're not purchasing vehicles that CARBs may at some point say you can't, you can't use them anymore because I know we have that going on in our farming community uh, with vehicles that are on the road and they can't get, um, the, um, uh, the farming community can't get those vehicles licensed through DMV. So um, as you're moving forward and purchasing vehicles, and especially if you're applying for any kind of grants, uh, it would be wise to check through CARBS to make sure that our city is in compliance uh, because we don't want to get caught purchasing something that we may have to just decommission earlier than the uh, life use of that vehicle. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jones? Uh, yes. Um, every year we go down to the California League of Cities, and uh, it's a great place to learn um, some do's and don'ts and policies on council members on how to uh, operate up here. And one of the things they tell us is if we have questions about items on the agenda, to ask them to staff in advance, specifically relaying them to the city manager or mayor so we can get the answers to the questions we may have. So as we don't try to stump the staff up here with questions that they're probably not prepared for, as well as confuse the public. So I will ask that this is probably gonna be my sixth time going down to the League of Cities. Uh, Council Member Lewis, I'm not sure how many times that you've gone, but I'm sure it's a lot more than I. Uh, if you are going down in October, please, take a refresher on that class. Um, that way we can get the real transparency out there. That is all. Thank you. Pro tem. Ms. Lewis. Thank you. Uh, to the public, I think you all know, and I'm going to say it once again, that it's difficult for me to get any answers because the city manager has to give staff permission to talk to me and to any other council member. So obviously, some of our council members have more um, ability to talk with staff than I do. And since I'm in that position, then I have no other alternative to take the position of answer, asking the questions here. But it's also for the public benefit because all of the money that we spend, and today, including our check requests, we're spending well over $5 million. Uh, 
it's all on a, a part of the agenda that you as the public cannot ask questions on. So as one of your representatives, I'm going to make sure that I try to get the information out to you so that you can understand what's going on in our city, why the money's being spent as best as I possibly can. So that is my charge while I sit here on this dais. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, thank you. And that's all the questions you had on G H I J and K and L. Okay, we'll save a comment. I'll save my comments till the end for the during the thing. So we're going ahead and accept a a motion for the consent agenda. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'd like to uh, approve the consent agenda as submitted. Do I have a second? Mr. Begonia? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. We'll move on to the next item. Item number eight. This is a public hearing. If you challenge the proposed action as described herein in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing. Describe herein or written, written correspondence delivered to the city at a prior to the public hearing. And then we go to item A, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration regarding the proposal that the city of Los Banos, acting as a city of Los Banos Groundwater Sustainability Agency, GSA, approve the Delta Mendota Subbasin sub 5-022.107 the San Joaquin River Exchange Contractors, the GSP Group, Groundwater Sustainability Plan, GSP, as it relates to the City of Los Banos, GSA. And now we'll return or turn it over to the Public Works Director, Mr. Burgess. <clears throat> yes, sir, Vice Mayor Lambert, members of Council. Um, tonight we're holding the public hearing on the City's Groundwater Sustainability Plan. Uh, as the Council may be aware, the, the, um, we're in the Delta Mendota um, groundwater uh, authorities uh, basin and the uh, the uh, state has asked that all the basins prepare a groundwater sustainability plan <clears throat> um, starting back in 19 about 2012 2014 the um, the Delta Mendota uh, uh, authority has submitted a basin um, uh, their, their plan uh, has been returned a couple times to get any corrections <clears throat> this this plan that the city has worked with the uh, uh, authority, um, we believe, uh, will pass the state's review. Uh, it's been under uh, the past two years. The uh, all the agencies, there's 26 different agencies in the basin, have worked diligently to try to get the uh, the plan up to speed so it'll it'll pass um, muster with the with the state. And uh, we've uh, <clears throat> this uh, plan has is been available to the public for. I believe since um, June, and this this was a public hearing announced to take input on the on the plan. Mr. Uh, <coughs> Chris White from the um, the exchange, uh, San Joaquin Exchange, uh, is here to answer any questions. He has a lot history of the uh, uh, with the basin and the efforts to prepare a groundwater sustainability plan longer than I have with this basin. So I, I asked him to show up and perhaps give some background and ask questions, answer questions. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. So um, I think the background was fairly stated. Uh, we've been working on uh, developing a sustainability plan for this whole basin. And re remember, the Delta Mendota Basin goes from south of Mendota to north of Patterson. So it's about 120 miles long. A lot of diverse interests involved in that. 23 different agencies. The city of Los Banos is one of them. Um, we have uh, gone, gone back to the drawing board. Uh, after in 2022 getting notified that our plan was inadequate. We figured out the reason why it was inadequate. We had six different groundwater sustainability plans stitched together in one under one cover and sent into the into uh, DWR for compliance. And they looked at it and said, look, there's not enough. Uh, there's not enough. That's the same. You know, there's different standards in different areas within the within the basin. Uh, and so they, they deemed it to be inadequate. We looked at the basins where they did find them to be adequate, and they just had one GSP for the whole basin. Okay, we got the message. So we went back to the drawing board uh, together with our partners and in in all 23 of the agencies, and we, we selected one consultant, and we developed a single GSP for the whole area. City of Los Banos has been involved in it, and I think 
uh, Chuck's involvement has been uh, been very good on behalf of the city. Um, so we're, we came to you earlier, well, late last year, uh, to say that we're working on this process. Uh, we had a governance uh, a document that we needed to get adopted by each of the GSAs. The city cooperated and, and, and adopted that. Based on the committee setup that came out of that agreement, uh, we worked together to come up with a GSP that we have now submitted uh, to achieve uh, compliance within this basin. So I'm very optimistic about that. And I'm here to ask you to, along with the cities of uh, Mendota, Fireball, Dos Palos, Gustine, and Newman, uh, within our area, the areas that we surround as part of the exchange contract, who have already adopted, had gone through a public hearing and have adopted this, uh, this program or the, this resolution, together with other cities like Patterson going further north. Uh, and so that we're, 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 we got everything put together correctly and we're in front of the state board. We're expecting to see a, a public hearing on our document sometime in, uh, by, by the middle of 2025. And I'll answer any other questions that might might come to mind. Do I have anyone up here that can ask a question? Ms. Burgess, do you have anything else? No, yes, sir. Uh, can you also explain uh, the reason for a public hearing to, to tell us? We, exactly? we, uh, not a lawyer. Okay, yeah. so we, we were asked to, uh, to adopt this uh, via public hearing. So each of the, each of the, each of the, uh, uh, each of the agencies have done so, and right. so it's been. It's a resolution, and also by public. And this is going to state level, correct? Correct. And what is that? And what I'm trying to make sure everybody out there uh, understands is to make sure it's getting the backing of our city to go along with him to the state. Absolutely. So that's what he's yeah. asking for us. Uh, so you guys understand. This. That's what a public forum is for. And I think the public right. hearing does actually make it just available for all all public to make a comment yes. on it from from any any different uh, uh, perspective. And we welcome all that. I right, appreciate. It. So, if nobody else has anything else, we'll turn it over to the public and ask if the public has anything. To say. I see nobody with the public. Anyone call in, Ms. Nicole? Okay. So at this time, then we'll go to, did anyone up here have uh, questions? Okay, we'll close the public hearing and move to council to entertain a motion for city council resolution number 6835. Mr. Jones? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion to approve city council uh, resolution number 6835 as submitted. Thank you. And a second? I'll second that. Mr. Begonia? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it passes. Thank you very much. And this, we will support the to the state. We Thank you. At the exchange contractors. Yeah. Yeah. Work. I, I will say that the exchange contract districts who have been in this area for as long or longer than the city has been here as well. We value the length of our partnership going back in history and well into the future. And uh, so thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Now at this time, we'll go to item number nine, Colorado Park renovation update. And we'll go to Parks and Recreation, Mr. Helm. Good evening, uh, uh, City Council, um, Mr. Pro Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I am presenting tonight an update on the Colorado ballpark uh, project. Uh, as you'll recall, um, we presented um, uh, a conceptual plan uh, and proposal for Colorado ballpark on March 20th, 2024. Um, so just as a refresher, our background, um, Colorado ballpark is over 70 years old uh, and has hosted uh, Los Banos Little League since 1969. Um, it also includes other amenities on site, so restrooms, uh, parking lot, tennis courts, and a skate park. Um, it uh, requires uh, improvements throughout the facility. Um, it is one of the most popular um, locations uh, in terms of usage. 
Uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll show you some of the site conditions. Um, so you can see, I know we had some public forum reference it, but you can see the light pole. We've had three light poles go down in the last three years. Um, we have some vandalism in the bathrooms. Um, that's a regular occurrence. You can see up there in the, um, I guess, upper left there, that's irrigation. That's our galvanized irrigation lines that are in um, what we're dealing with in the fields. Um, flooding is one of the biggest issues on site. Um, but there's other issues on site beyond the photos, um, asphalt deterioration of the tennis courts and parking lots, as well as um, electrical um, concerns with the buildings uh, at ADA throughout the facility. Um, the skate park is, is generally considered outdated um, and just generally speaking, um, a lot of issues throughout the park location. Um, going back and looking back at some of the public input we've taken on Colorado Ballpark over the years, um, of course, we include Colorado Ballpark as part of our Parks Master Plan uh, process, which included surveys as well as meetings. Um, we've applied for a grant previously, which we didn't receive, uh, and that was 2021, uh, but we had a public meeting, which was productive to get information on the park. Um, we've had stakeholder meetings with both Little League as well as the skateboarder groups that um, are involved at the park regularly. Um, we have presented this to the Parks and Rec Commission as well as City Council in March. Uh, just as a refresher again, the current site map of the park, um, you can see that there are three ball fields on site, the skate park, tennis courts, and some concession and restroom buildings. Um, so the update that I'm primarily presenting tonight and um, the request from staff is direction um, on this particular item is the addition of a splash pad and removal of tennis courts. Uh, a splash pad is something that's been highly requested from the public um, uh, for a number of years. Uh, a splash pad is, is also known as a spray, a spray park or water playground. It's an area uh, fitted with slip resistant surface with various nozzles and water features that can shower rain, mist, or shoot streams. Um, the city just presently doesn't have a water feature, whether it be a, a splash pad or whether it be a pool. And I'll uh, get into some of the benefits of, um, of a splash pad, but they do include the fact that it is, uh, provides free access, which you know, I think is an important uh, uh, element of a splash pad. Um, especially as opposed to a swimming pool. This isn't a swimming pool versus splash pad debate, but I do think it's uh, worth noting that, you know, we have a disadvantaged community, and I think having these amenities available for our, our public to use, our families to use, um, I think it's very important to have uh, recreational amenities, recreational activities, things to do um, in Los Banos, particularly ones that, um, that do encourage you to stay in Los Banos on weekends and on evenings and things like that. So I think it's uh, very important to, to talk about that, um, as well as just the general um, pride and, and um, you know, fun that comes with the splash pad. Um, so here's the conceptual map, um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll, I'll leave this image up, but um, uh, you can see the proposed changes are primarily in the um, upper middle area, so you can still see the skate park on site uh, that does um, uh, replace the tennis courts. This te the skate park is shifted over to the I guess that would be the south um, there. Uh, primarily to get the splash pad closer to the restroom facilities, there are some requirements that I'll get to um, that uh, make it so that the splash pad has to be uh, near restroom facilities, um, among other uh, requirements. Um, I did want to make note uh, while looking at this conceptual plan with the parking lot, you'll see that that has shifted from the original, from the current uh, Colorado ballpark design. Um, this design does add about 60 spaces to the parking lot, so from about 115 spots to about 175, um, so whatever that is, a 50% or so increase, um, which I think is significant to note uh, just because of the popularity of uh, specifically Little League as well as what we anticipate the splash pad to be. Um, this is what we presented in March, uh, just as a reference. Um, you can see the tennis courts there on site, the sk uh, skate park, uh, again, shifted towards the north. Um, everything else on, on the concept is uh, remaining. Um, the staff does not have a relocation site for the tennis courts um, at, this, at this time. Uh, we do feel that uh, relocating tennis courts is a lot simpler of a process than a splash pad, uh, primarily due to uh, the supporting amenities. So parking lots and restrooms being two of the highest um, amenities that a splash pad really essentially requires, um, whereas a tennis uh, courts, especially um, as few as two courts, uh, it, it, there's a lot more flexibility in the locations that we can go uh, evaluate for that in the future. Um, 
Uh, looking at a splash pad just with a little bit more um, uh, detail, um, again, there's going to be elements. This is conceptual at this stage, but there are going to be elements such as uh, fencing, timing, uh, timers, locking systems, um, what the splash pad itself looks like. Uh, a lot of times you see a large um, uh, spill bucket like you can see in the upper image, um, but there's all sorts of different uh, amenities within the splash pad. Uh, pads that um, can be considered for for design, um, the theme, uh, things like that. So um, all those are important to um, consider. Uh, again, uh, parking and restrooms are really going to be uh, important for uh, the splash pad, and that's where we want to look at these locations that have that as an option. Um, Splash pads are zero depth, as you can see, uh, which means that there are no lifeguards. So um, there are some operational cost savings there as opposed to, again, a swimming pool. However, um, of course, there are operational costs in terms of chemicals, maintenance, et cetera. And I'll get into a little bit of that um, uh, later in the presentation. Um, there are requirements um, that I just want to highlight uh, some of the some of the. Uh, um, Requirements that um, you know the general public may not be aware of. Again, splash pads operate very similarly to a pool, uh, and they do fall underneath um, health and safety codes. Um, so things like restrooms within 300 feet, a hose bib within 50 feet, um, a, a 4,000 gallon recirculating uh, water tank is is, is probably going to be at the size may vary a little bit depending on the size of the splash pad, but a recirculating tank is going to be um, required. We're, it's going to have to be maintained by by certified staff. Um, the pool house is going to have to have a solid roof covering um, things like four inch sewer lines, 1.5 inch water supply, um, eight heated shower heads, and at least two drinking fountains. So just some of those things that um, are important to get into before we um, just plop a splash pad anywhere. We want to make sure that we're able to meet these, these codes. Um, and obviously with a project like this, um, uh, demoing out our existing park and, and being able to recreate something that works for us, we obviously want to plan ahead for that. Um, tip, typically, splash pads are open um, seasonally. Uh, I'd say May to September or, or some, sometime in spring to early fall is, is typically uh, the time period that splash pads operate. Um, uh, we do show three shade structures on the surrounding area of the um, splash pad. Um, staff has uh, discussed uh, possibly having those available as, as rentable to help offset operational costs. Obviously, um, that's not going to offset the, the construction cost or anything like that, but hopefully it would help um, offset some of the chemicals that may um, that may be required for uh, service. Um, we have looked at uh, splash pads at um, uh, prior uh, council meetings. We have applied twice for grants at the first splash pads at Pacheco Park, um, as well as there was a presentation to council um, uh, for Pacheco Park. Um, staff primarily is recommending Colorado Ballpark um, because of the, the, the depth of the, the improvements that are proposed with this project, um, given that a parking lot and a restroom and just the spaciousness of the plaza. Um, we feel that this is a, 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 an amenity that's going to make this a community, um, a community, you know, this is going to be the focal point of the community in terms of our, um, our park system. Uh, Pacheco Park, I think, has a much longer uh, time frame in terms of um, deciding what we want to do um, as a city in terms of the, the future design of that park and what um, uses may be there. There's also limitations there in terms of parking, and that was one of the concerns that was brought up a, a few years back. Um, so staff does feel confident that this is a, a project that um, can move forward, um, uh, again, given city council approval and direction um, uh, fairly quickly. So um, again, that's why we feel that Colorado Ballpark is an ideal location to move forward with this uh, project. Um, and again, trying to make this project um, something that really uh, supports uh, diverse uh, park users, everybody from skate park users to splash pads, uh, adding that active amenity on site, as well as, of course, the organized, um, specifically Little League that goes out there and, and plays um, on site. Um, so just looking at the next steps, um, so one of the biggest questions, obviously, with this project is the uh, total amount, the dollar amount. Um, staff has, uh, is, um, Seeking at this time, if the, assuming the project is, is uh, given direction by city council, uh, the design build process, and we're targeting a budget number of $15 million. 
Um, internally, uh, staff feels confident there is as much as $8 million available in the Park Development Fund, um, which is for capital improvements in our, our park system. Um, we have also um, received uh, just over 900000 from City Council's direction for ARPA usage. Um, that's the funding that we're currently using for um, any surveying or um, design that we have at this time. Um, we also received uh, or will be receiving um, about just under one million dollars, about uh, nine hundred ninety thousand, I believe, um, from Assemblywoman uh, Soria's uh, Esmeralda Soria's support, um, which is uh, we have to be very, very grateful for um, her support and everything that went into securing that funding. Um, just a, a very, very. Um, gracious of her to support this project and to believe in this project. Um, so that leaves us with about uh, just under 10 million as far as what we feel confident internally that um, we're able to fund as of right now for this project. So staff is seeking um, uh, external or internal funding for uh, approximately $5 million. This, this park does fall in the most disadvantaged area of the community, which um, helps to make it uh, very eligible for grants moving forward. Um, so we are looking for all sorts of funding sources, whether they're grants or um, uh, community members or other um, entities that may want to support this. Um, of course, uh, internal funding uh, can also be evaluated as an option. Uh, that would, of course, be brought forward to the city council uh, for approval if we were to go that direction. Um, and you know, again, we want to be as creative with with this funding as possible. We understand that this is the biggest investment that we've ever asked for um, by a, a very, very large margin in, uh, in terms of Parks and Rec investment. And we just feel it's, a, it's obviously uh, worth it for that investment, but also something that um, that's going to take uh, staff's effort to find that funding. Um, we anticipate the splash pad will add about 800000 to a million in construction costs. Uh, again, items such as parking lots, restrooms, um, were already included into this uh, concept. So there may be some slight adjustments uh, uh, with the restroom facility specifically, um, but primarily uh, the entities that are getting added to this is uh, the pool house as well as the splash pad and its operations. Um, there will be future costs, uh, again, um, the chemicals and operations of the splash pad uh, does come with an expense. Um, we do have to have certified staff or um, a way to contract those services. So that would be um, an annual or regular expense that we would be um, uh, needing to fund as a city. Um, again, staff is, is suggesting to, to try to have some rentable spaces that may help offset that um, cost. Of course, we are still all, um, identifying the airport land use. Um, we referenced in the staff report, but um, things like the light pole height uh, uh, is, is something that we're trying to evaluate. Um, we are trying to stay within the current footprint of the park location, um, but we are still evaluating that um, aspect of the project. Um, and that concludes the project. Uh, I did want to thank um, specifically our finance department. Um, Vanessa uh, Portillo as well as Brent Kuhn have been um, really key in terms of um, guidance for me. Um, Stacy uh, has also been a huge help in terms of uh, pointing me in the right direction on um, land use and, and helping me just generally with the project as well as, of course, um, you know, when you have other supporting departments um, like community economic development, you have funding such as the Park Development Fund, which comes directly from our impact fees. Um, and I also just wanted to thank our Public Works Department, um, who have um, helped us tremendously with our projects, including this one over the years. So, appreciate it. If there's any questions, Mr. Ryan, that fifteen million that includes the total of the whole park, correct? Yes, we're anticipating that to be our budget uh, for, the for the total, including um, changes uh, that we've. Are Change, proposal, proposed changes that we have here tonight. Okay. Mr. Jones? Yes. Uh, Mr. Heim, uh, this is not the first time. It's, uh, I mean, Colorado Ballpark, it's great that it's getting revamped. I mean, remember when I was a kid playing t ball out there, it was, it was rough then. Um, and maintenance is always difficult when you have infrastructure issues like poor drainage and everything else just riding away. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense to continue maintenance scene. Sometimes you got to wipe the slate off clean and start fresh. But, uh, you know, when I, when I heard about the splash pad going in here, uh, I was really excited because it seemed like the ideal location of town fits the right census district for future grants and maintenance. Uh, you have the space, you already have some of the infrastructure like bathrooms and 
uh, everything else that's needed to kind of help benefit that versus uh, just doing a standalone splash pad at a park where you got to incorporate all that into. Um, but the talk about a splash pad has come off multiple times before in the past. Um, and we just kind of want to reassure people out there what makes this different than the times before on the other talks um, as why is it now a Bible project where before it was just talk. You know, it was just ideas, but it was just never really anything feasible. Maybe you can kind of explain some of the differences there. Well, I think there's a number of differences, but um, a couple of the big ones are um, there is additional funding available. Uh, the Park Development Fund has only grown, but I think uh, overall one of the biggest is just having um, stability of leadership. We have to have that, um, whether it be from our director level or the council level or just generally staff level. We have to have um, stability in order to compete to get these, uh, this size of a project complete. So um, looking back on when we were reviewing Pacheco Park, uh, there was a number of, for example, public works directors that, um, that had changed during that time. Uh, Parks and Rec as well was getting split off from public works shortly thereafter. Um, so we've had just a lot of um, changes internally in terms of, of moving projects forward. Um, Pacheco Park itself has also had an ongoing discussion of what are we going to do with Pacheco Park, whether that is a um, swimming pool uh, getting constructed there, whether that is something along the grant concept or something much simpler. Um, obviously, we, we did end up doing the, the water connection at Pacheco Park, but very little else has moved forward in terms of that park, and I think um, that'll be a discussion for, for future, but um, staff is really wanting to um, get Colorado Park um, upgraded. We continue to run into these issues such as light poles falling down. This is something that's only increased. Um, we're, we're dealing with major site issues on site. I think the, the fact that there are stakeholders on site there, such as the skateboarders and the Little League that are so involved, will help um, push the project forward. Um, and we just have had a lot of, um, of support for the project as a whole. Excellent. Uh, a couple more questions, Mr. Hunt. And so just to refresh my memory, we've never actually had a formal vote uh, for a splash pad. It's just always been discussion. Is that correct? Um, if I recall, I'd have to go back. But if I recall, uh, in 2021, we had a meeting where uh, council provided direction that uh, Pacheco Park was to be evaluated um, for the splash pad. However, again, um, that project really never took off from there due to, to staff changes. Okay, and there's never been any defunding of um, a possible splash pad uh, during talks. It's all been in our Parks and Rec uh, capital improvements fund, right? Yeah, again, we've had funding such as like engineering or surveying, but we've never um, uh, funded a construction of a splash pad. We never had that available. Okay, so we never funded, so we never could have defunded it. Okay, that makes sense. And then uh, lastly, so after this, I'm, I'm pretty sure council would want to go forward, but we'll find out here. After this, what would be the next steps? Because it's just one of a few more steps before we actually get to the exciting part, which is awarding a bid. Uh, and then it gets really exciting from there. So what would be the next steps involved from here? Um, the two big ones are financing and the land use. Um, so uh, given direction from city council tonight, uh, if that was given, then um, we will move into those phases, uh, uh, defining that land use as well as continuing to try to secure funding. We do, like I said, um, have funding available with the ARPA funding um, this fiscal year. I think we have uh, just over 900,000 available, which is more than enough um, for engineering uh, in any supporting uh, services. Uh, so we'll be able to use whatever's left over there for construction. But in the meantime, we have enough funding to begin the engineering design phase. Um, that is a process. The, uh, this, this project involves um, a lot of technical aspects from the splash pad to the buildings. Um, so that will be uh, a several month process. I would imagine a minimum six months, uh, likely six to 10 months uh, process of engineering that. Um, we want to get that out to bid uh, probably sometime uh, uh, towards the end of next year. Uh, and then uh, obviously at that point, it would be about four weeks after that bid to, to get construction uh, awarded by city council and mobilization there shortly after. Okay, so there's still quite a bit of planning on this, even though we got a two dimension drawing, there's still a lot of, you know, details that have to go in and before it can go out to bid, that does take time in government. So we're looking at maybe the end of year, best case scenario, if the momentum still progresses the same way uh, at City Hall uh, before it would go out to bid. So it could be 2026 before we can actually get a bid awarded. So we're still a little bit of time away. 
Um, yes, I would say that I would hope that it would be a little bit sooner than 2026, yeah. you know, by a few months or so. But um, we are, um, it would be a bulk of, of 2025 in the design phase. Um, this is a conceptual um, a design here, so there are elements that will still be evaluated uh, just for, um, uh, you know, anything from electrical to, to water usage. Okay. Like so, so we should definitely probably see this on the 25 26. Uh, um, fiscal budget uh, next year when that comes around as far as the actual numbers that are going to be involved. Yes, uh, and at that time we would have uh, uh, you know, a better idea of what we're looking at in terms of the budget, but yes, we would present that um, again. Um, hopefully at, by that time we also have secured additional funding um, and we'll try to keep City Council uh, up to date on those. I, I know this is a project that is exciting and of interest to City Council, so of course we'll try to provide updates. Okay, and again, uh, great design. I love the idea of a uh, parking lot in the center where it's central to everything so that's that's really nice so great job staff thank you that is all miss lewis thank you <clears throat> yeah excuse me um director heim could you please go over those numbers again with me because i have that it's going to cost approximately 15 million dollars to construct design this park um there's nine Hundred thousand in ARPA money set aside, and there was nine hundred thousand given by allocated by Assemblywoman Sorius, um, and then there's eight million in park development funding right now. Is that all? All of that eight million designated to go to this project? Um, sorry. Uh, so yeah, just going through those numbers again. That's that's tr correct. Uh, just over nine hundred thousand dollars from ARPA was directed from City Council. Um, just under a million, I think it was about nine hundred ninety thousand, um, uh, is uh, supported by Assemblywoman Soria. And then yes, uh, about eight million is what we expect from the Park Development Fund. Uh, the Park Development Fund um, continually recruits funding. Um, there are also um, some parks being built, and leftover funding from there will be. Um, uh, moved into the Park Development Fund, depending on what's left over. Um, we aren't banking on that as part of this, so we do anticipate some leftover funding within the, the Park Development Fund, um, anywhere from 500000 to $2 million available in the Park Development Fund, uh, based off of um, uh, whether it be accrued funding or just uh, some remaining funding. Um, but, but again, we don't want to exhaust the fund entirely. Uh, this is a fund that was, I think, Gosh, I think not even six, seven years ago was at like fifty thousand dollars. So this is something that um, accrues when when housing is 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 getting built, um, and we do want to have funding, uh, some level of funding available, uh, whether that be for grant matching on grants for reimbursements, things like that, or uh, emergency basis of of perhaps a project that's needed. That being said. The, the fund is there to um, develop parks, to um, give us the ability to develop a specialized park such as this. Um, and we have been uh, building that reserve specifically to try to tackle a bigger problem in town in terms of parks, whether that's Pacheco Park, whether that's a swimming pool, whether that's Colorado or a, another amenity in town. So with that being said, of that eight million, how much do you anticipate on putting towards this project? For the, the $8 million is what we anticipate towards the Park Development Fund, and then we anticipate there, there still being some leftover funding uh, between um, what is uh, leftover from uh, park development projects as well as um, uh, just what is going to be accrued over the next couple of years during this, this project's um, lifespan. So that leaves somewhere between six and seven million dollars. No, I, again, I'm sorry, uh, the $8 million is what we're committing to the Colorado right. Ballpark Project, and then we're um, but, there should be some leftover funding. It's just very difficult to um, it's very difficult to uh, predict exact numbers on what the Park Development Fund is going to accrue because it is based off of the development of housing, uh, and that's going to be based off of um, developers, council's approval, timelines for construction, things like that. So, with the uh, the two nine hundred thousand, that's one point eight million, I believe, maybe in mm -hmm. Numbers are wrong, but nonetheless, and then the eight the eight million, um, roughly we have what somewhere between six and seven million that will be unfunded at this point. Uh, we're looking at just just under ten million available, hundred hundred thousand or two hundred thousand shy of, of ten million, um, leaving us just over five million dollars of what we're targeting as a staff as our budget. 
Okay, so you're saying that there there's roughly about ten million that still needs to be funded. No, five, just five, over five, five million. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So with that being said, um, what are the chances of some grants in the future? Uh, to I mean, it, are there monies out there that you're looking at now that we can apply for to fill the gap? Yeah, um, we have been looking at a number of grants. Um, we anticipate uh, some larger grants to come out uh, from both the state of California as well as um, uh, there's been a lot of funding through um, uh, uh, water, uh, I'm not sure what the word might be, like water departments throughout the state um, also have funding available for community improvement projects. Um, there's a couple of those that are larger. Um, of course, it does become a more appealing project for award when we're able to say, hey, we're willing to match this, not just with 50%, but we're willing to match this, you know, at a two-thirds rate uh, to, to 10 million versus the 5 million, or even if it was a million that we're asking for. The, the fact that the city is uh, in a position to be able to match uh, is going to make our um, our applications for those grants uh, more attractive. Um, again, uh, this isn't a disadvantaged community. Uh, I think it's the the highest, uh, I guess, the lowest uh, ranked disadvantaged area of of town. So again, that makes us very appealing for grants. Um, and a lot of times, grants do allow for um, reimbursement going back to the project start date. Uh, it depends on the grant. Um, but that's where um, we are hoping to start the design phase, at least um, with the funding that we have available now, uh, and then try to pursue um, external funding. But again, um, you know, like funding like Esmeralda Soria's, uh, Assembly Women at Soria's uh, funding, um, uh, that was uh, through the state of California, but it wasn't in the form of a grant. So there are other ways to get funding beyond grants. Uh, uh, again, uh, community members, generous uh, uh, members of the community uh, may also want to contribute to the project. Um, um, and I think that uh, very much this project by its end is going to have um, multiple funding sources to get, get us to that ending point, um, whether that's internal funding or external funding. I think we're definitely going to try to piece this together, just like, as you can see, with the internal funding using ARPA and using the Park Development Fund. Um, it, it, you know, we obviously have are limited in terms of our internal parks and rec funds, but we do have Measure H that we can look at as well. Um, and we want to try to get this... Um, get this project done because again um, just going back to this community and what we have available I think that um, what we found during the parks master plan process is um, the city does an excellent job at the neighborhood park I think we have um, you know some, we have something like 37 playgrounds and pushing about 40 or so green spaces and I think um, within walking distance I think that uh, much of the city is covered in that way but it's uh, very much the specialized amenities that um, we've been lacking and of course that's compounded by you know, some entertainment issues in, in town as well. And so I think that's what helps make this a, a valuable um, project to um, invest, you know, that heavy investment from the Park Development Fund uh, and possibly other funds. Thank you. Yeah. Is it all, Mr. Yes, thank you. Commissioner uh, Jones? Yes, Mr. Heim. Uh, one more question, just out of curiosity. The grant that we got from our Assemblywoman uh, Esmeralda Soraya, how did that uh, materialize? How did that come about? What was the culprit behind that? Um, that was our city manager, Josh Benyero. He spent a lot of time with our assembly uh, uh, member, Soria. Um, I believe they have regular communication. Um, he was able to bring her on site, is my understanding, as well. Um, and, of course, as anybody that grows up here or has been here, I think getting on site and seeing the current conditions of Colorado is um, it's a good selling point in terms of, of investment in this, this park. So um, it was uh, through our city manager's office. Well, thank you, city manager. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I feel that uh, this is a great opportunity. I, I, I feel definitely uh, confident that even throughout the next several months, we will find grant money to get us pretty close uh, to about completing the whole 15 million. I, I have all the faith in you guys for that. So uh, I think it's going to be a uh, an excellent uh, location for the splash pad. Uh, it's just we got to get to that point and get the next direction. Uh, I appreciate my time. Uh, Mr. Begonia, did, or did you have something? To yeah, I just uh, want to say great presentation by Joe Heim. Uh, Thank you to Assemblywoman Soria for chipping in big time. 
uh, at Grant. Um, as I said before, I love this little league field, but it is uh, pathetic. Um, and that's an example, just one example of uh, the many failures of our past leaders up here. And uh, we have many ideas and words. People like to come up here and use them all, get their, get their constituents fired up and um, use all the words and ideas, but action does not get taken. Um, that park's seven years old and looks every bit of it. Um, as a whole, has a face only a mother could love. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to get this done. I have full faith in Joe and our city staff and city manager to piece this funding together, like Joe said, uh, to make this happen. Uh, it is a huge investment to our community. It's our one little league. Though. I don't know if you guys looked around. We have almost nothing. Bowling alley shut down. We have one movie theater struggling, as they said when they came. That's it. One little league field, and that's what it looks like. Not that. That's what it's going to look like. But uh, the dead patches and gopher holes and the rocks that uh, get into your knee and give you, let you spend three days in a Valley Children's Hospital when you're 15 years old, that was me. Because <laughs> there's rocks in the Little League field, uh, which there shouldn't be any rocks on the Little League. Maybe there's not now. Vice President, hopefully there's not. You guys have cleared it up. But, uh, um, so I, I look forward to it, not just the Little League fields, the uh, whole, whole, um, renovation of it the the skate park to our water uh, splash pad and um, it's just going to be great for uh, our community one one big win for our community that we needed a lot um, not to say we don't have amazing parks as we do but those aren't baseball fields those are parks to play at throw a football around play some soccer um, so great work again um, and thanks Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mr. Heim, uh, what is your direction you need us to? Um, if the city council is um, wanting to move forward with the proposed changes to the concept from March, which uh, um, are to add the splash pad and, re, um, and remove the, the tennis courts from this uh, conceptual proposal. Do I have everyone here on Ms. Lewis? Motion to uh, accept his. Uh, yep, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Yes, I'll make the motion to um, approve the revised design as submitted with the deletion of the tennis courts with the addition of the splash pad. I'll second, second that. Mr. Begonia. All, right. All in second. favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. Uh, you have your direction, Mr. Thank, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. I, I was on social media. I did see uh, our mayor was not able to make it tonight, but he did say he was in favor of this and very excited as well. So I just wanted to include that. It's pretty much all five of us are in sync up here on this project. So good work, staff. All right. We'll now move on to item 10. The cancellation of regular city council meeting scheduled for Wednesday, October 16th, due to council members attending the League of California City Conference in Long Beach, California, October 16th through the 18th. And do I have a motion? Mr. Jones, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. We'll now go to item 11, advisement of public notices. And we have no reports. We'll now go to item 12, Mr. City Manager report. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Here with you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Appreciate it. Uh, this is an extremely exciting night for us as a community uh, to get this splash pad added to the Colorado ballpark. It has uh, been something that we have talked about for a long time as a city. Uh, it has been mentioned, it has been discussed, and I just uh, could not be more excited uh, for us to move this forward. Um, we hear it a lot throughout the community. Um, it does get really hot here in Los Panos, and uh, we no longer have a public pool. I'm sure many of us that have been here in Los Panos for a really long time remember the public pool. 
Um, I remember going to the public pool. Um, and so for us to be able to move the splash pad forward is extremely, extremely exciting. Um, we have put a lot of uh, hard work into this. Um, yes, there have been conversations. There have been mentions. There have been, you know, uh, side conversations about it. But I'm really excited for us to actually move uh, this forward and, and, and get this established for us. Um, I like to uh, uh, big thank you to so, uh, Joe Heim and I. We have talked extensively about Colorado Ballpark, as you folks can see. And I know I've mentioned it some months back when we talked about uh, the renovation of Colorado Ballpark. It is just it has been neglected for many, many years. The folks that um, are there, you know, have uh, uh, played in it in a very um, deteriorated way um, and utilized it. It has just been neglected. No attention has been given to it from the city. And so I'm really uh, thankful. Um, Joe Heim and I, you know, when we came on board, we talked about it a lot. We've gone over a lot of different designs. We would talk about it one week and then come back and come up with another idea about it. Um, and so there's just been a lot of discussion for us to get it forward. And I'm happy and I'm very grateful for um, the leadership of, of, of the mayor, especially um, the mayor when he came on board um, about two years ago. Um, Colorado Ballpark was a big focus of his. And uh, we talked about it extensively as well, looked at different designs, different uh, layouts, and discussed, and um, would even go and talk to Joe Heim, uh, who's our director of Parks and Rec, about it. And so um, a big thank you to the mayor for his leadership and really paying a lot of attention to that. I think the mayor's son is part of Little League, so he would spend a lot of time out there. Um, and um, as Joe had mentioned, you know, there would just be poles falling. Poles actually fell down on the stands. Um, when it uh, just out of nowhere, they just fell down because they're uh, rotted, um, uh, electrical issues, just all kinds of problems. So it's extremely, extremely exciting that we can uh, get this move along. And I just, I, I really want to give a big thanks to the mayor and focus on the parks. And as we have mentioned, uh, parks has just been a big focus for us. I know in Councilmember Lambert, in your district, we're really focusing on ag sports complex and pickleball courts. You and I have talked extensively about ag sports complex and getting that taken care of. So um, we're really excited to. Uh, get that project moving along here soon. Um, I know uh, we got uh, the Noah Jones ballpark all done. That was an eight hundred thousand uh, dollar plus renovation. That is the ballpark that is um, right there off Seventh Street, right by Fire Station Number One. Um, so that was a big project that we were able to get done. Uh, and then we got our first inclusive playground, which is over there off College Greens Park. Um, uh, and that was a, a nice playground done. So we really just targeted a lot of areas. And I just want to uh, uh, continue to let the folks know that we're you know investing. Um, in the infrastructure here for the community, for kids to be safe, and for adults to go there and just have a good time. So we're really, really um, excited about this project. It's definitely uh, much needed and long overdue. So really, really happy about that. And I just uh, want to thank everybody for their hard work, Joe Heim and your team and staff, and uh, Stacy working with him, uh, and Vanessa and working with him on the financing. And uh, once again, very uh, grateful. Um, this was able to you know continue to help get it over the finish line. Esmeralda Soria was a... a um, uh, very gracious and spent time with her, went out with her to the uh, field um, to go and take a look at this uh, facility. And uh, she was uh, very gracious enough to award us, you know, about a million bucks for this. And so uh, just a huge, huge thanks to her uh, for helping us out and making this a reality for uh, the kids here in the community. It's extremely exciting um, uh, on that. Uh, the other one just in the last couple of weeks, uh, we just once again have stayed really busy throughout the city and working and getting projects done as we uh, voted on getting some vehicles here. We, um, you know, we need vehicles so we can get work done. Um, and we needed them as of yesterday because there's just been a shortage of vehicles. And um, if you folks been out in the community, you can see we've been paving roads quite a bit. Uh, we've paved Wilmot Road. Uh, we paved L Street, which is a street right by uh, the DMV. Uh, that one got done. Uh, we we're able to pave Willow Road and Mahogany. Uh, we we're able to get Apricot Road um, paved. Um, and we have uh, some more roads that we plan on getting paved here soon. So we're really excited um, with a lot of the road work that's been done. Um, we've continued to do an extensive amount of tree trimming in the community. Um, uh, we were tr uh, trimming trees on the uh, Travertine area um, and uh, the Gardens 3 area, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Um, so we're continuing to do that. And actually, uh, maybe it was Monday, if I'm not mistaken, either Monday or Tuesday. It was really windy uh, here in the city of Los Banos and folks. Um, I can tell you the tree trimming just has continued to pay off uh, because before when it was really windy, uh, naturally, you see a lot of trees fall down, a lot of tree branches fall down, and the city was not trimming trees at all, like zero, didn't, had not 
had a, you know, tree trimming uh, program or operation for, you know, 10 plus years. And so since we have begun to trim the trees, folks, it has minimized the damages on either personal vehicles, city vehicles, homes, people's property, uh, call outs for uh, police and fire and for public works. Um, and so uh, we're really excited to continue that on. And also, as you folks can see, it just beautifies, right? Uh, the community and beautifies the neighborhood. So we're really excited about that and we continue to uh, get more of those trees trimmed. Uh, another project that we've gotten done is uh, when you go by our F Street uh, yard, our public works yard, we got a new fence that got put up around that F Street yard. Uh, that fence uh, was just in really bad shape, neglected. It's just, and unfortunately, it was just kind of the story of a lot of the uh, conditions of our buildings and our facilities were just neglected, not invested in spending of things that over time just the road and uh, decay. And so we got a, a nice new fence up there. Um, it looks really good. So we're really happy about that work that we got uh, moving along there. And uh, we got um, a fence that's going to be going up around the community center. Uh, so, you know, our, our tax dollars are being put to good use uh, for us uh, to uh, upkeep our facilities and keep us safe. Uh, and then also at the community center, if you haven't had a chance, um, off to the side of the community center, we have uh, solar panel parking. Uh, or, uh, or I should say solar panels that were installed over the parking uh, uh, lot there. And so we're, that was in partnership with Peninsula Clean Energy. Uh, and so we're really grateful for them, for their partnership. Uh, and it's really exciting for us to uh, continue to have them here and to work with us. And as you heard them, uh, heard her today, uh, Vidi, uh, give an update about another program um, that they have coming available. And i like to encourage everybody to uh, visit the Peninsula Clean Energy website um, because they just have many things that they offer uh, to the community as a discount um, or just other programs uh, that are available. So um, I like to encourage folks to go take a look at that. Um, it's very uh, exciting, the work that they're doing here with us in the community. And thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And now we'll go to item 13. I was not briefed on any update on MCAG, but we will turn to uh, Ms. Lewis. For PCE or airborne, I'm sorry, Miss Lewis. Yes, I have no report at this time. Our airborne meeting will be held tomorrow. Thank you, Miss Lewis. And any update, Downtown Association? Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, last Thursday, we had our annual uh, farm table. Uh, event dinner it was great excellent weather it was actually perfect weather sometimes it's hit and miss um, want to thank on behalf of the downtown association all our volunteers they work their butts off over there as well as our sponsors that helped out so much um, it, it was definitely really uh, great and congratulations to Robert McDonald he was named our farmer of the year so it was a it was a great night great event overall so just wanted to share that a little bit Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, now we'll move on to item 14, City Council member reports, and we'll move over to Ms. Lewis. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, well, the, the one thing I'd like to share with you this evening is I received a phone call from um, a staffer for the president of the Resolutions Committee for the League of Cities of the State of California and I was selected to sit on the resolution committee for uh, this coming conference coming up uh, next month. <clears throat> the resolution committee um, hears resolutions that come to a vote for the General Assembly, uh, which um, uh, Council Member Jones and Magonia have been selected to be the delegate and alternate delegate for the city of Los Banos. Uh, I also received information from the president requesting and asking, and they have ask all cities to do so, that each uh, city should have received their resolution uh, that is to be voted on at the League of Cities, and uh, they encourage each city to have that resolution brought before the council so that the council can uh, give their recommendation to their delegates when they vote at the League of Cities. So um, that is the recommendation or request of the president for the resolution board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Now we'll jump down to Mr. Bergonia. Um, I have no update, but um, to the two ladies who stuck around from um, Ward Road in San Luis, I do have some cards if you could stick around after I give them to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Bergonia. 
And Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, on the consent agenda, there was some um, vehicles on there that we desperately needed. And the way that you got to kind of look at these are, are tools. If, if you can't get the good or service in town, unfortunately, you have to go out of town. And I don't think there's anybody up here or in staff that wouldn't uh, love anything more than getting all their resources that they need and even services in town. But unfortunately, sometimes due to uh, circumstances, you have to look a little further out. So um, and that goes with anything. We hire paving contractors that are from out of the area because we don't have them in city limits. We hire tree trimmers from out of the area. We hire consultants, engineers. We hire all sorts of people because, uh, you know, Los Banas. I mean, it's 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 pushing 50,000 people, but it just does not have every good and service that we can think of. Um, and if you think about it, you know, as much as you'd like to wait on a certain good or service, think of it as your own house. If your water heater goes out, I think after your first water heater or after your first cold shower, if you couldn't get your water heater in town, you're going to drive out of town to go get it. So just like you at home, the city has needs. It has to be met. We have a duty to get things done in a timely fashion. We are... Uh, fortunate enough, though, that we can get some things in town, um, quite a few things. Um, hopefully in the future we can work on getting more items, though. So that's all I want to kind of add when it comes to uh, purchasing goods or services in town. And that is all for tonight for me. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I'll go last. Uh, I'll start off with uh, the young ladies also from Ward and Lewis. Um, you know, until we can figure out some other solution, hopefully... Uh, we, uh, if you guys do feel uncomfortable over there and you see something going on, uh, don't hesitate, you know, to, uh, to call and see if you can get a drive-by to see something to, to look out there. Uh, but hopefully we can find some type of resolution or some type of help that we can get out there for the maybe a big fence or a fence like you're asking. Also, uh, I want to make something clear. <laughs> uh, the consent agenda. The consent agenda is open to the public also. If you have questions, we're here. You can come to the stand and you can ask your questions. If we feel the need that we need to pull it off, just like Ms. Lewis does, we'll ask your, answer your questions. Well, everything is transparent. The money, I mean, it's, you can come to our city hall. Everything is on our city website. Uh, you can see where all the monies are put forth. You know, I, sometimes I can't understand why someone says, I just don't understand where all of our money's going. Well, right there in black and white on the city website so, but if you have any questions on the on anything on the consent agenda if you're welcome here or you can call your uh, council person so, that's all I have to say tonight uh, just I, I think we're yep take a mo motion to uh, adjourn the meeting mr. Jones second, second. All, right. all in favor aye, aye. Meeting is adjourned at 7.57.